and then how's it going? So first of all, I will apologize by my really bad English. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a charm uh, accent as the Daniel Rowe or British accent, so sorry for murder your language. I will try my best. Okay, I'm from Venezuela, so my Venezuelan accent will uh, arise. So uh, how many of you have done 3D with WebGL or... Okay, more than I expected. So what if I told you that this is scene right here, that is a kind of a potion wizardy uh, scene, is entirely done with view components and composables. Okay? So in the beginning, the name of my uh, presentation today was going to be Tres Yes, a declarative way of doing 3D with web components. But I have been playing Hogwarts Legacy like crazy the last year, and I thought to myself, oh, let's change it, okay? Uh, boring naming, let's change that. And I come up, well, no, ChatGPT comes with this. Uh, Tres Yes and the Chamber of View, unlocking the mysteries of 3D rendering. So with that, I present myself. My name is Alvaro Saburido. I'm a DevRel engineer at Storyblock. I'm from Barcelona, Spain, but originally from Venezuela. I create a lot of content in Alvaro Dev Labs. Some links, if you want to follow, say hi, always welcome, OK? Uh, so yeah, that's, that's actually me. I don't know what happened. Uh, but uh, that's the boy who lived uh, playing video games because, yeah, I was a kid that loved to play video games. And to be honest, that kid never grew up. This is me uh, playing with my cat, Gerald. Um, <laughs> So what was my motivation? When I was a kid, I really wanted to learn how to create video games. Okay? I was fascinated by the golden era of PS1 games like Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon. And who will forget that good game of Hogwarts, like Harry Potter, with those amazing graphics? Look at that. <laughs> HD right away. Right? <laughs> so. Um, Something to point here, I, I wanted to study that, but uh, it was really expensive in Venezuela to be a game developer, so I ended up being a telecommunications engineer and then being a front-end development, where I'm here right now, I'm super happy. But I left like 3D on the side, okay? I thought it was for people that were truly brilliant, geniuses, like how they do that stuff, until I um, discovered 3GS, okay? So 3GS is a library that leverages the WebGL part, okay? The different Part and make it available for uh, JavaScript developers to code and make their scenes. And I found out this uh, amazing course by Bruno Simon, uh, is the one in the picture, uh, to learn how to do it. And six months after that, I was learning and I was able to create my own scenes. Then I discovered React Refiver. And wait, before you say why you're talking about React in a view uh, conference, right? I know, but React Fiber is an amazing library uh, made by Poem Andres, which is an amazing studio, and they made something that blew my mind. They were basically able to create a scenes with their React components. So instead of using plain JavaScript, they were able to use that. But there is a catch here, is that I will never use React. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I use React, but I prefer Vue, okay? Never. So I was trying to find something that would work for you. Okay, so I came up with this amazing library of try yes, this is probably the one you know, because it was the first one to try to do a wrapper. So it was a manual wrapper uh, that tried to replicate all the different components. And then I found um, Lunchbox, that is the other one, um, that is a custom render. And stay with that phrase, custom render, okay? But the thing was that TryJS was really difficult to maintain because it was a manual wrapper, and to be honest, three years always evolve. Every week there is a new version. It's really difficult to keep up with the changes. So that's how TresJS yes, um, born. Okay, so what is TresJS? Yes? It's basically a custom renderer that allows you to create the 3D scenes declaratively by using your favorite framework, using view components and composites. 
Uh, the war is uh, the Spanish war for three, so it's tres years, and uh, it's based on the three years library, and as well because the French war was already taken. So I came up with that. Uh, what was, why, why tres years? Look, why not using another one? I wanted to create something that was up to date with the latest 3GS with zero to non maintenance because also maintaining a library like this is really time consuming and a lot of effort, right? That is lightweight, that you could install it and the performance of your web application or uh, page is not affected. That was verbose and easy to use. That's really important for the developer experience. Of course, developer experience focus. We needed something that was enjoyable to do 3D. TypeScript support. Everyone that has worked with 3GS know what I'm talking about. And uh, that could be performant even with reactivity, because 3GS uh, is powered with Vit. Okay, so Vit make possible that all goes well. Uh, last but not least, I wanted to create a 3D ecosystem for the Vue community. Uh, myself and a lot of uh, colleagues were, we wanted to uh, create 3D scenes and we were not able to do it because there was nothing like for, for Vue, okay? So how we can get started is as yes, uh, pnpm add thres yes core and as a pure dependency you can install three, so it's not part of the bundle, or you can play with it on stack blitz. And look how cool is this? Uh, I'm using a slide dev, so this is like a markdown, okay? And I embedded one of the basic scenes right here. This is stress, okay? So you can put it on, on, on your um, on your slides. So um, first thing, like how to use it, right? So we need to set up a canvas. Uh, 3GS work with the DOM element, the canvas element, to draw everything, okay? So um, before we can create an scene, we need to import the Tress canvas component from the core and add it to the template. Really important that everything that we want to render in or a scene needs to be inside because the Tress Canvas will create a custom render that works for the 3D uh, scenes, like the 3GS instances and objects. We need, for setting up a scene, we need uh, three things. We need an object, and I always say three things, it's actually four, sorry. So we have the objects like the geometry, uh, the lights, the plane uh, simulating the ground. We need a camera to be able to see it. We need a scene to put everything together and a render to render in the canvas element, in the HTML one. Okay, so how we can set up in the scene? In the left part, yes, uh, we're gonna have how you can do it with 3GS, like Vanilla 3GS, okay? So you normally create a scene using the constructor 3 a scene. Uh, it's visible, right? Yeah, okay, uh, you can do a camera um, by creating a perspective camera this way, and then you are going to pass the canvas into the render. You're using the WebGL renderer, and last but not least, you're gonna use the method render to pass the scene and the camera. Let's do it the Tress yes way. Uh, you only need to import the Tress canvas. Tress canvas is handle everything from you, from resizing the screen, from adapting the aspect radio, everything is covered. And then you just need to import a Tress perspective camera. All the components are the same name as uh, 3GS, but you only need to do a prefix called Tress. Now let's add an object. So if you were using plain 3GS, you're probably going to create uh, a geometry, okay? So uh, I'm using Torus geometry, but um, it's a basically a donut. I don't know why they didn't call it a, a donut geometry. It's Torus geometry, okay? And these are some of the parameters that you are gonna pass. Then we need to define a material. When the geometry is the structure or all the little pixels, uh, like uh, vertices and so on, the material is how the pixels are gonna look like, how co what color they're gonna have, like how uh, reflective they're gonna be. Then you create the mesh. Sante. Uh, they're gonna create the mesh, that is the combination between the geometry and the material, and then boom, you have your object. You add it to the scene, right? 
With TrustCS, yes, you have to import a trust mesh component, and we're gonna use a view slots here to pass the torch geometry with some arguments. You can see that the arguments are exactly the same as we were passing to the constructor here. So you can pass any parameter for initializing the constructors using the arcs prop. Then we can do a trace mesh basic material and pass the color as a prop. That's also possible. And boom, we have a really ugly donut, but we made it. We have our scene, right? Cool. I love that meme. Um, okay, how, how does it work in, in, the, in the underground, right? Um, we are taking the tree latest, so we are taking the latest version of tree, and we are taking all the different instances, all the different properties, methods, everything, and we're applying a little bit of magic, which is the, AKA the custom renderer, and then this is converting everything into view components that you can use. So let's talk about the arguments, because we touched that point uh, just frequently, right? Um, you can initialize any argument, like you would do in, in 3GS, like this, uh, the perspective camera, you are passing the field of view, the aspect radio, and how far and near is it, these values right here. And the way of doing that in 3GS is gonna, and 3GS is gonna be with the arts prop. Then you have normal props, which are this, similar to the properties, okay? So you can pass them as this, and this is going to be similar to initializing the constructor empty without any parameter, and then just change it uh, dot, 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 and you're gonna have the same thing. I mentioned uh, view slots because you can pass parameters inside of the mesh to create something similar like this. So whenever you're passing components inside another component, it's gonna do a reference as if it was an attribute on the initial or the parent one. So yeah, let's do some demonstration. Um, yeah, I know the, the, the spell went wrong, and um, it's my first live coding, so be kind with me, please. Um, of course. I oh, know this is actually the page. Let me let me check where is it. Uh, here, ah, nice. Okay, so uh, you saw that it was black pitch, right? Because we need a camera to be able to see it. So here you have the most basic uh, tr uh, tr Tres ES application. You have imported the Tres canvas, and I'm passing in a clear color, which is basically going to be the re the background color. Okay, so here I'm going to do Tres perspective camera. I'm not gonna pass any parameter, okay? I'm gonna save and then, where are you? Let me put it right away so I'm not doing this so often. Sorry about that. Now we can see the color that we defined, so we're on the right track, right? Now let's do something else. Let's add a cube. So the way we can use a cube is by passing tress mesh, and then inside of it, let's use the tress uh, box geometry, that one. And this is recent, because uh, in the version one, uh, we didn't have TypeScript, so this was a nightmare before. Also, let's add a tress normal material. Let's save. <coughs> And now we have a nice cube, right? Thank you. Oh, so, so glad that it worked. Okay, um, and we're gonna do another thing that is really cool. So I mentioned also composables, right? So we are gonna import a composable that is called use render loop. In gaming and in 3D in general, you are uh, rendering frame per frame, because if you do an animation, you're gonna render several pictures in a timely manner that UI is gonna see it like smoothly, right? 60 frames per second, that's on. So, Tress Canvas already does that for you. It creates that render loop, and you can access it by using the compostable use render loop. So we're gonna use the compostable to animate our um, queue. And here comes something really important about reactivity and the use of Tress, yes. So you know that a view reactivity is based on proxies, 
right? So you could think right now, okay, if I want to animate it, I will do something like rotation, then, uh, I don't know, a ref or reactive, okay? It's just an example, and pass it to uh, the mesh as a property, right? So we will do like position, and then like this. This will work, okay? But since this is reactive, your frame per seconds are gonna drop because view uh, reactivity is based on proxies and they're not as fast as plain objects. <laughs> so the recommended way of doing this is actually let's get rid of this rotation right here. Okay, and we are going to use template refs. Uh, anyone familiar with template refs in view? Okay, so basically template ref is a way that you can get the instance from uh, the, uh, uh, the template for that uh, component. Okay, so here I'm gonna create a box ref. Mm, come on. And you're gonna see that I'm using a shallow ref. Uh, amazing for activity. Uh, because shallow ref will allow you to be more, ooh, five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna do it way more quicker. So we're gonna watch, uh, we're gonna pass it here, sorry, to this one, box ref, okay, not like this, and we're gonna watch, uh, probably watch effect, no, nah, not even. We're gonna go here and say if box ref value, so if it's available and it's not new, okay, Probably move this up. We are gonna rotate it. So let's hope this works. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> okay, I will never do this again. Um, let me let me refresh this and um, go to the. Uh, where is it? Here. Okay, I will real uh, quick. So um, my idea of Tracy's it was an uh, ecosystem of applications, packages, and so on. So we have another one that I didn't use in the demo, I forgot, it's the Cientos package. And in the Cientos package, it's the word for hundreds in Spanish. And basically, it's all the abstraction, all the like uh, shaders, all the different geometries uh, easier to use, you can have in Cientos. Why not in the core package? Because of size. So the core package is bare. You can do everything with that. But if you want to have a better developer experience, you can use uh, Cientos. Okay? And also, uh, I know it's a bad joke, but uh, tres Cientos is like 300. Okay. <laughs> Enough, uh, sorry about that. Um, so here I have some of the abstractions, so like text, text 3D, you can create uh, text in 3D, you can use animations, uh, you can load models, like the one that I put in the beginning is using these composables right here. So everything that is uh, extending the core, okay? Uh, oh, let me refresh now. So one of the abstractions, for example, is the float or the Leviosu um, um, component that allows you to float whatever you put inside. So if you put a feather, uh, you're gonna have like Leviosu, like uh, Hermione, okay? Uh, Tresias is meant to be an ecosystem. So the core package and the Cientos is made, uh, maintained by us. Uh, we have in the roadmap, the post-processing one uh, is already in, in work. And who knows, like maybe your uh, package can be part of the ecosystem in the future. This is a roadmap. I want to highlight the work of the Knox Lab uh, team because uh, this is Volta. And I'm using it uh, with my team to be able to establish a roadmap and um, be clear about uh, the priority and so on. So you can see that we are trying to translate the docs, uh, create presentational controls, HTML, uh, contact shadows, and some fancy stuff, okay? Uh, some resources here. Um, my slides are gonna be available as soon as I fix them, because it's, I don't know, I have a problem with the slide up, but here are the documentations, StackBlade Discord, and some tutorials on my YouTube channel. Uh, I wanna highlight the amazing effort of all the contributors, uh, because this is um, it's about to be open source, and uh, I had the help of amazing contributors that helped me, like uh, Jaime Torralba, Tino, with uh, Constant Constantine, Randy, uh, Madi, uh, and in the future, maybe you. So um, a lot of people have asked me like, why is it not open source yet? Let's basically change that. 
So I'm going to go to GitHub. <laughs> Where are you? And let's change the visibility to pull it. Yeah, I have read effects. Come on. <laughs> Seriously? This was meant to be my moment. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Brilliant. Yes, please. There you go. It's public. <laughs> So, from now on, version two, we are going to release it today. This release candidate, but we are going to release it today as well as uh, Cientos package. And the rest of the packages are already there. Okay? And if I find myself again, I don't know how much I have, but I do want to say something else. Uh, no. Okay. So I spend, um, go there, I open tickets, uh, crash it, uh, contribute, um, I'm waiting for it. I really love uh, how people are using it already. Uh, so show me your stuff. Uh, I will be more than glad to put it on, on, on the playground. Uh, thanks to my sponsors, Danny Dev, Smart Bakes, uh, Easy Teams, Kisu, uh, Mastery, and Storyblock. That was my sponsor before I joined the company. Um, right now I'm setting up the sponsor for Tres ES, so be able to also uh, sponsor my uh, my team, so that will be the idea. If you can contribute, amazing. And a special thanks to Cody Bennett from the PM Andres uh, that helped me with the custom render API, Berekia Patek uh, for their uh, showcase and help, Yael and Daniel Rowe uh, for all the help, and also Shago from uh, PM Andres uh, team. So thank you very much.